How are y'all doing today? Y'all go ahead and turn to uh, Matthew. So this is going to be just a little bit different today because I'm not going to actually do the reading on on some of this. Now, there will be some verses I'll read. But one of the things that uh, today is my what I named my sermon was how good, how good of a man do, do you have to be to go to heaven, right? How good do you have to be to go to heaven? So, I want to ask you some questions today. Why would you be poor in spirit? Why would you mourn? Why would you be meek? Why would you be hungry and thirsty? Why would you be merciful? Why would you be pure in heart? Why would you be a peacemaker? And why would men revile you and persecute you and say evil things about you? So nobody thinks an evil people go to heaven, right? Am I clear with that? Nobody actually thinks that. It says we all instinctively believe heaven is reserved for good people. So the question is just how good do good people need to be to go to heaven? So I, I believe Jesus is stating in Matthew, in the Beatitudes and further on down through the whole sermon, he's, I believe Jesus is stating just how good you must be. And to answer this question, we're going to have to read, we're going to read along in chapters 5, 17, five, Matthew chapter 5, 17, through Matthew chapter 7, 12. So this is going to be a little while. So that's the reason why I said it's going to be a little bit different. Bear with me and just sit back and, and get your Bible out. This is the New King James Version. And just read along with it. If it plays. Trust me, y'all would rather hear this than hear me read it. That many. It's because it's going to go through a couple of chapters. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever, therefore, breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there, before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly, while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, 
pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's, that's not it, it's just a chapter. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward, but you, when you pray, Go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father, who is in the secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly.
when you pray. Do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father, who is in the secret place, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble.
judge not, that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So if you noticed, right there, it started with the Law and the Prophets, and it ended with the Law and the Prophets. And he said, this is the Law and the Prophets. So that was the main reason. This is the meat of Jesus' sermon, right there. And many people in that time, and many people even today, they thought they were doing the outward appearance that they were righteous, that they were good. I'll give you a quote right here. Uh, John MacArthur quote, quoted, says, Grace means nothing to a person who does not know he is sinful, and that such sinfulness means he is separated from God and damned. It is therefore pointless to preach grace until the impossible demands of the law and the reality of guilt are before God, before God are preached. So in this sermon that Jesus was preaching here, he not only thought, he not only spoke about who's a murderer, who's a thief, he went even into more detail. So many great teachings need to be taught here in these verses. But the main idea I want to say today is that the basis of what the law and the prophets are. Jesus starts in chapter 5, 17, and he says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And ends in Matthew chapter 7, 12, and he says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would do to men ye should do, ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Here is Jesus' first recorded sermon that we know of, and it presents the law and the prophets. After the multitudes hearing of the kind of people God blesses, they would have had they would have had to say to themselves, How could we ever attain that kind of character? How can we have this righteousness? How can we enter into his kingdom? People then and now wonder how they could get into heaven without being subject to the law. Jesus said that he didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Even And even said that in Matthew 5, 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jolt 
or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law. So, so you understand what a jolt, a tittle is. I've got, I looked it up, a jolt and a tittle uh, are like the smallest little details like your, your parentheses or what makes a Q and an O the difference. He says that isn't even going to change. So this morning, and he said that until heaven and earth passed away, right? So this morning, we're still here on earth, right? So that means pertaining to the law, it hasn't changed. Except now, we know it's even more demanding than it was even with the commandments. Because now you know that it starts in your heart. It says, James understood the law clearly that he gave this statement of what the law demands in james 2 8 and 10 if ye fulfill the royal law according to scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well but if ye have respect to persons and commit sin and are convinced the law convinced of the law as a transgressor Whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offends at one point, is guilty of all. So that I'm going to go into a little bit more. If ye fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He was quoting that Scripture from Leviticus 19.18. It says, Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. In James uh, 2, 9, he says, But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law of tr- law as a transgressor. So where was he saying that? Uh, earlier up in, the, in, in James, he said, My brothers and sisters, believe, believers in the glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes to you wearing gold ring and fine clothing and a poor man in filthy old clothes comes in. If, he sh- if you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothing and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit in the floor by my feet. Have not your discrimination have you not discriminated amongst yourself and become judges and evil thoughts? Deuteronomy 1 16 and 17, where he was getting that from, he says, And I charge you, I charge your judges at the time, hear the disputes between your people and judge fairly, whether the case be between two Israelites or between two, an Israelite and a foreigner that resides among you. Do not show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone. Judgment belongs to God. Bring me the case that is too hard, and I will hear it. In James 2.10, he says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offends at one point is guilty of all. In Matthew chapter 5, 19, and this is the NIV version, he says, Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom. In Galatians 3, 10, it says, For All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. The law demands absolute perfect obedience. So Jesus then tells us who is a murderer, who commits adultery. Marriage is sacred and binding. Do not make oaths. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemy. Help others in secret. Pray in secret not to be seen by others. How to forgive. 
not to let people know you are fasting. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Not to have an eye for evil. You can't serve both God and money. He tells you not to worry. The way you judge others, you will be judged. And to treat others as you want them to treat you. That was his meat of that whole sermon. Remember when Jesus said in Matthew 5.20, For I say unto you, unless your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. I believe he was saying to clean the inside first. And I'll give you this, because in Matthew 23, 25, and 26, he says, Woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cups and dish, but but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgences. 26 says, Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean. Woe unto you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which are which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones and dead, dead, full of bones of the dead and every unclean, everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So, studying in the uh, Ryrie Bible study notes, one of the things that he was saying in, in these, these chapters was, your righteousness, we must understand this as your practice of religion. The Pharisees' righteousness was external. It should be internal. So what makes an internal cleaning, I believe, what makes internal cleaning is the Beatitudes. So, all of the Beatitudes produce an internal righteousness. So, when I ask you a question, why would you be poor in spirit? Because you're mourning, because Jesus, you've got to go to the Lord and clean that inside of you. Why would you mourn? But, but because you're mourning, you're, you're, you're poor in spirit because you realize, let me say that again, you're poor in spirit because you realize you can do nothing. For your own salvation. You can't be good enough. You're, why would you mourn? Because you know that you can't be good enough. Why would you be meek? Because you have to obey. You can't go out and, and you have to be power under control as we learned. Like a stallion. Like that. You have to learn how to control your tongue. Paul talks about controlling the tongue and how evil it is. Why would you be hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Because that's what you're seeking after him. Why would you be merciful? Because Jesus was merciful to you to die on the cross for you. And so you're going to have mercy given to you. You're going to show mercy. Why would you be pure in heart? Because that's the cleansing of the morning and of the being poor in spirit. It cleanses you and you become pure in heart. Why would you be a peacemaker? Because you no longer want to have that evil eye, but you want to make peace with everybody and love everyone. And then why would men revile you, persecute you, and say evil about you? Because they see in you something they don't have. And that's where you're the light of the world and you're the salt of the earth. And that will bring persecution. It did to our Lord and Savior. So, how good do you have to be to get to heaven? Romans 3, 11, and 12. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. 
if you want to go to heaven, and this is one of the things that, that I was looking at, if you'll notice it towards the end of that sermon after he presented all those laws. And there's more, even, that's not the end of the sermon. I will go into more detail next week. But the meat of that, after he said that, he says, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and everybody that seek findeth. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. John 3, 16 and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn it, the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 1 John 3, 21 and 24 says, Dear friends, if our heart do, do not condemn us, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him everything we ask because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. And this is His command, to believe in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know, this is how we know that he lives in us. We know by the spirit he gave us. Charles Spurgeon said, I do not believe that any man can preach the gospel who does not preach the law. So, concluding with that, I wanted to present to you the law and the prophets. Because that is what plows up the ground. That stony, hard, hard ground. That's what plows it up for you to receive Jesus. And he who asks seeks he who asks will, will get he giveth he receiveth he who seeks he'll find and he who knocks the door will be open anybody who wants Jesus and he'll make you he'll let you he will teach you how to do if you'll allow him to be those people in that character he'll teach you every bit of it I've seen it in my life I've got friends that we've talked about it and they've been in their life. And it's not perfect. You're not going to be perfect. But God will, through the washing of his word, he will teach you and show you if you ask and seek. So that's, that's, that's the end of it today. Uh, let's just pray real quick. How good must one be to be accepted? The Lord said, One jolt or one tittle shall not pass until all be satisfied. Our Lord was saying that to be accepted into heaven, one must be as good as the holiness of God revealed in the law. That is how good a man must be to go to heaven, as good as God. We stand guilty and condemned before God unless a man keeps the whole law, he is guilty. But in grace of God through the death of Jesus Christ, a righteousness has been provided for the guilty sinner. Blood has been shed to wash away the stain of every sin. Righteousness in parts makes a man as righteous as Jesus Christ. Christ is, so that a holy God can look at the one who stands in Jesus Christ and say, say, that one is acceptable in my sight, accepted in the beloved. There is no greater word in 
all the gospel in that. We have been accepted by a holy, righteous God to stand in his presence. The Pharisees who recognized the need for righteousness sought to provide righteousness by their works. They failed. Christ rejected them and their righteousness. Their only alternative was to receive the righteousness from him. Men today are faced with the same alternative. They either must provide the righteousness for themselves, which no man is able to do, or receive it as a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ. How tragic to fall into the way of Pharisees when the way of life has been provided.